Director McLaren? Yes. Director Ricky? Yes. Director Calandri? Yes. Director Yaroslav? Yes. Director Paris? Yes. Motion is carried unanimously. <coughs> We're now on item four public comments for non agenda items. Are there any public comments for non agenda items? Hearing none, takes us to our. Item five, we do not have any special presentations. That takes us to item six, our consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Motion made by Brandon, is there a second? This is Derek, I'll second. Second by Derek, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda, items A, B, C, D, and E by roll forward. Director McLaren? Yes. <clears throat> Director Ariki? Yes. Director Colandri? Yes. Director Urasic? Yes. Director Paris? Yes. Motion's carried unanimously. Uh, that brings us to the advisory committee report. Uh, is there a report by the advisory committee? Hi, Mr. Chairman. This is James. Can you hear me? Yes, James. We hear you very well. Uh, the advisory committee met on November 30th to discuss the action items presented on the agenda. Uh, there was one topic, it was the new transfer application, the Calandry Water, and the uh, committee didn't, uh, took a vote to take a vote, and it did not pass. They felt, um, they felt okay. sorry, I keep hearing someone else. Um, they felt that there wasn't a proper time, uh, the application was uh, not submitted at proper time, and we did not have the proper time to... Uh, review the application to make any decisions and we recommend not not approving the application at this time and that's everything else on the agenda speaks for itself okay james any further discussion from the advisory <clears throat> committee appreciate your report thank you and that brings us to our administrative committee good morning this is matt so the administrative committee met last friday with uh, directors uh, Ariki and Urosik. A few items that we went over, we went through the agenda for today's meeting, spent a little bit of time going through the budget in detail, uh, talked about some uh, outreach activities associated with the budget that Hallmark is pr proposing. Uh, we also reviewed the USGS contract that's gonna be considered today by the Watermaster. Um, Gave an update on how the transition's going with the Hallmark Group over to the admin services. And Craig Parton gave an update on enforcement activities. And anything else you'd like to add, Director Zariki or Yurasik? I think you covered it. Okay. No, nothing for me. Great. Thank you. Great. And uh, Matt, can you introduce our uh, members from the Hallmark Group that are here with us today, please? Yes. Yeah. So we have uh, two individuals here today in person, uh, Jim Beck and Jessica Owen. Um, and then on the phone today, we also have uh, Joshua Montoya from the Hallmark Group. So, uh, in my understanding, our next meeting, uh, Hallmark will be our administrators. That's right. We're going to uh, pop the champagne a little bit later today <laughs> and celebrate. So. Well. Welcome aboard. It's really good to have you here today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And that brings us to item nine, consideration possible action on new production application. And that's going to be Phyllis. Good morning. I think Kate is going to handle this one for us. Yes. Good morning. This is Kate White with Tad Groundwater. Is my volume okay? Yeah, we hear you well, Kate. I thought you were retiring. I know. <laughs> yeah, we don't I let think. her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this year is a transition year, so I think right. um, I will be retiring starting next year. In state service, you'd be called a retired annuitant by now, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Thank you. All right. On today's uh, application, on today's agenda, there's one new production application, and it starts on page 30 of the agenda packet. And Kyle Bergren is requesting one acre foot per year of new production for a single family home and a workshop. And his property is in the northwestern portion of the central Antelope Valley sub area. 
and that location is shown on a map on page 42 of the packet. And he um, is not planning on any outside irrigation, so outside water use will be minimal. And the information provided um, indicates that the water will be used in a manner consistent with California best water management practices. And given the small amount of proposed production, which is uh, less than one acre foot per year, and the obligation to pay replacement water assessment, Todd groundwater finds the potential for material injury as defined in the judgment is negligible, negligible with this application. And the applicant is a party to the judgment because they are part of the Willis class. And the advisory committee recommended approval of this application. Are there any questions? Straightforward. Go ahead, Adam. No, I said it's a straightforward. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, anyone else? Okay, is there a motion to approve resolution number R2263? I have motion to approve. Second okay. by Kathy, second by Brandon. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor of the motion by roll call vote. Director McLaren? Yes. Director Ariki? Yes. Director Colandri? Yes. Director Urasi? Yes. Director Paris? Yes. Motion is carried unanimously. And that brings us to item number 10 consideration possible action on transfer application. Is that going to be you, Kate? That's going to be me as well. Go ahead. There are two transfers on today's agenda that are related, and they've been combined into one transfer packet. And the resolution um, for this um, transfer is on. Kate, this is, yes. I'll be hanging on for one moment. Sure. Brent, you have. Yes, this is a, a family transfer of mine. I'm going to need to recuse myself on this item. And then, Adrian, can you uh, take. Brandon's, I guess. Uh, it's Angelica. Is Angelica on now? Yes. Angelica, yes. Angelica. Angelica. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear no you. No worries. So, Angelica, you're going to sit in for Brandon at this time, or I guess phone in for Brandon at this time. Uh, yes. And you want to sit and participate? What would you do? And Angelica will take this off. Okay. And Craig, we're. So, Brandon. Uh, it's going to stay in the room, and do you have any problems with that? We have a memo back in September of 2019, uh, Chairman Paris, about the the issue of uh, when, if any time, a board member would have to recuse themselves. And uh, that memo sets forward the, the protections that are involved, that other board members effectively hold a veto um, if if a director was to act in total self-interest in a vote, um, I, I don't think Director Calandri is legally required to recuse himself, um, but he can do so. Um, I, I think if if he does so, um, he might think of exiting the room and being uninvolved entirely in the discussion if. Uh, if that's what his uh, preference is. Okay. Thank you, Craig. And just for the record, uh, Brandon has left the room for this discussion, and then Halika will sit in his place. And Kate, I'm sorry I interrupted you, and go ahead, please. That's okay. So the resolution um, for this transfer is R2265, and that starts on page 45, and our letter starts on page 53 of the packet. And the Calandry Water Company, which is an Exhibit 4 party, is dissolving and would like to transfer its permanent production rights to Caruso Investments and to Calandry Farms. This transfer application was received after the deadline, and Mr. Calandri requested that it be processed for the December board meeting. And the advisory committee had voted three yes to four no to, um, to vote on moving forward with this um, application. And so they felt that they didn't have time um, for it, but I will continue introducing it um, anyway, unless you think we should stop at this point. No, go ahead, Okay, and so um, our letter 
it's on page 53 of the packet, and Calandria Water Company would like to divide ownership of its um, 1776 acre feet per year production rights. 1322 acre feet per year will go to Caruso Investments and will be used on the same parcels that Calandria Water Company uses. And 444 acre feet per year will go to Calandria Farms, who is an exhibit for party, and that um, transfer is for investment purposes only. Caruso Investments is not a party to the judgment and will need to intervene. And, um, and the letter provided with the transfer packet indicated that um, this is a series of transfers as a result of a group of Calandria parties settling the ownership distribution of their Exhibit 4 water rights allocated to them as a group. And to protect the water master from incurring costs um, defending any future lawsuits challenging the settlement among the Calandry parties, the Watermaster Council recommends that the transfer approved approval be contingent upon receipt of an indemnity agreement from both John, John and Catherine Calandry, individually in their capacity of trustee and our manager. And um, let's see, so uh, we recommend approval of this based on the following conditions that Calandria Investments successfully intervene, or Caruso Investments successfully intervenes into the judgment, an identity indemnity agreement from both John and Catherine Calandria is submitted as recommended by the Watermaster Council, and Calandria Farms submits a new point of extraction application or a subsequent transfer application, um, and that the new um, application is approved when they um, determine where they wanna use that water. Are there any questions on this? Anybody? Can I just note uh, for, Go ahead, for, the boards, uh, for the board's uh, consideration, the indemnity agreements are attached to the resolution as exhibits B and C. They're essentially identical. We've done this before, required an indemnity when the transferor is representing that they hold all the water rights for another party. In this case, there were um, trusteeships involved and a marital disillusion and a representation that the water rights uh, were in the possession of, of Mr. Calandri and or uh, Kathleen uh, Calandri Nelson. So we have uh, prepared those indemnities. They are of, of the same form the board has seen before. Uh, and I think it's just prudent, um, the, though I, Mr. Calandri has made the, uh, the case that uh, all their interests have been uh, conveyed to them either through the marital dissolution uh, or other process and that they have the right to do the transfer. Um, the rules and regulations allow us to get an indemnity and I would recommend uh, if the board is inclined to approve the transfer, that it be conditioned number one on Crusoe Investments intervening in the next 30 days, and number two, indemnities uh, pre-signed by uh, Mr. Calandri and uh, Ms. Kathleen Calandri Nelson. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Craig. Are there any questions? So, uh, Crusoe enterprise or i forget the name they would use the water in the same property that mr clandry was using the water at yes they would use a portion of the water um, on the same um parcels that clandry water company had been using the water so it's really no change of water use and it's actually a little bit less water use they'd be using there and the portion that is not going to be used what the, what is the state of that one? So, Calandria Water Company owes 1776 acre feet of production rights, permanent production rights. Right. So 1332 is going to go to Caruso, and 444 is going to Calandria. And Calandria right. Farms is just having that water as an investment. And so they did not indicate where it will be used at this point. 
they're going to hold on to it. And when they want to use it somewhere or transfer it, they need to submit a transfer application or a new point of extraction application for that water to be used. And that condition is in the resolution? Um, look, it's in our letter. Should it be in the resolution? It should. Okay. And one more question. I thought I heard you saying Crusoe is going to use a portion of the water that is allocating, allocated or is sold to them in the same property as Clandry's property. Yeah, I meant actually a portion of all of Clandry. Understood. So he's going to use the, the, all the 1,300 plus uh, uh, within the Clandry's property. Correct. Is that accurate? Okay. Correct. They're, I mean, they're asking to, I don't know if they'll use it all. Um, but there is no other places that they would pump it from except in in the same property. No, they did not indicate that on the uh, transfer. And uh, Director Ariki, the resolution does refer uh, to Calandry Farms' uh, situation in the titles. Good. Good, because you know, four or five years from today, we need yep. to. Yes. Yep. All right. Okay, and uh, John Calandra is here and would like to speak on the matter too. John? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to clarify that something because I know it's very hard for the board to go against the, uh, uh, the advisory committee. The application was turned in on 11-23, which is exactly one week before their meeting. So I believe we were on the deadline. I just wanted to make that clear. And um, th we did not change any extracts. You did not? Thanks. Points. No, no, and it's just it's just what it is. It's consolidating my mother and father's estate between my sister and I. Right. What it is, basically. Thank you, John. Any other questions or any questions for John? This this is Derek. I just I mean I heard Mr. Flanders speak and um, he said he turned it in time. Just want to confirm. Okay, there would seem to be a dis discrepancy from what you stated. Did you? you repeat um, the timing of that? Sure. Um, on uh, the advisory committee packet went out on Tuesday, 11-22. So it went on, on Tuesday, the 22nd of November. And um, the application, the transfer application was received on Wednesday after the um, advisory committee packet went out. And it was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so we didn't have a chance to look at it until that Monday. We, as requested, we looked at it on Monday, and on that Tuesday, we um, presented it to advice to the um, admin staff, who gave it to the advisory committee, and that was the day before the advisory committee's meeting on the 30th. Okay, I'm not sure I got my answer, but did they turn it in Sorry. on time? Yeah, did they turn it in on time and it just it, because of the holidays and the interaction between staff, we got it to the advisory committee late. I just, I'm, I'm trying to make sure yes. that they followed the process. I want to know that. Okay, yes, yeah, I'll be more clear. So, no, they turned it in after the advisory committee packet went out. Is that when it's supposed to be turned in prior to the advisory committee packet going out or was yes. it supposed to be? Okay. Yes, and actually, like, at least a week before that to give us time for review. So it, we can review it and have it ready to go out in the advisory committee packet. Thank you. Welcome. And John, is there, if you could, I do have a question. Is there urgency to get this? Completed? There is. There is. It's very important to the family. It's been a long time working on this, and we finally come to a a very mutual and agreeable situation. So it, it's pretty critical for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? And if you have any questions directly of John, I, I'm sure he would be happy to answer them. And to this question is to Craig Crusoe. Uh, is there a timeline for intervening? Yes. Uh, 30 days from the uh, adoption of the resolution. Okay. And he's aware of that? Uh, I don't know that he, he's aware of it. Uh, this this happened 
uh, our review of it uh, has been in the last week or so, uh, Director Rigi, and I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, other than uh, they read the agenda packet, which came out Monday, um, it might be news to them about giving the indemnity and Caruso intervening. Uh, I, I don't know. John is here. Are you you're aware of the need to intervene within 30 days? Yes. Okay. We're prepared to do that. Our attorney is already ready to go. Okay. In the you want to come up to the stand, please, so the people can hear you. Yes, yes, we're we're ready to intervene as, if we get the vote today. And just I don't know if this helps, but the the water is going to be used next year. The, I think I think Adam asked the question. It's going to be used next year on the ranch that it was proved up on for farming. Great, thank you. Thank you. That, that, that's another reason it's kind of critical. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, any other questions? If there is no questions, is there a motion to approve resolution number R2265? I move to approve. Motion made by Kathy. Is there a second? Second, Eric. Okay, go ahead. No, no, totally fine, Adam. <laughs> second by who wants it, Adam or Derek? <laughs> Does it matter? Be out of the punch. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought I heard Derek's voice first, so I'm That's good. an arbitrator of seconds. So uh, <laughs> it's. Kathy and Derek, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor of the motion to approve resolution number R2265 by roll call vote. Director McLaren? Yes. Director Ricci? Yes. Director Martin? Yes. Director Jurassic? Yes. Director Harris? Yes. Motions carried unanimously. Brings us to item 11. And I'll take a short recess so we can bring Brandon back into the room. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for being here. And again, thank you for your you. many years of service and yeah. congratulations. See all the faces. Always good to see you. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, Brandon has returned, and Angelica, thank you for your service. <laughs> and that brings us to item 11, proposed 2023 application fee schedule. And I think that's our administrator. Yep. Good morning, this is Matt. So on page 92 of your packet is the draft uh, 2023 proposed fee schedule. Um, it shows the proposed changes that were uh, we plan to implement or plan to present to the board in January. Uh, based on the rules and regs, because it is updating the fee schedule, we need to post a public hearing 30 days prior to considering this item. So what we're looking for today is approval on setting the public hearing for updating the fee schedule um, at the January 25th meeting. And then um, we have discussed this with the admin committee as well as the advisory committee and there'll be time between now and january 25th to make any additional revisions to this fee schedule so that's all i have unless you have any questions any questions on that Oops. on item 11. hearing none we'll go to item 12 consideration possible action to approve the 2023 administrative budget and administrative assessment for calendar year 2023, and that's going to be our administrator. Local stakeholders, you know, what, what's behind that, what's going on there. The other thing we've discussed with the administrative committee and uh, Matt and I have talked about with the, with the advisory committee as well was whether or not it's appropriate to have more structure to how you develop your um, practices and policies related to financial management, for example. Are you going to adjust your your uh, uh, groundwater assessments each year? Is it going to be staggered over a five year period or multi year period? What's tr what triggers that? Things like what should should you have a rate stabilization fund? What's the target of that? So 
there are some items that um, we've identified and seen implemented in other similar organizations that have addressed those issues, and that's something that you may want to consider. Oh, uh, we discussed this with the um, uh, advisory committee, and you know, the question is, how do you want to add that into the budget? Uh, there's no specific line item uh, number in there right now, and that's beyond the scope that we uh, have in our engagement. So if it is something that you'd like the homework group to, to take on as part of our administrative uh, role to facilitate the development of a financial management strategy and associated outreach, we could provide you know, a scope with that work with the uh, administrative committee to review that. Um, that's you know, something that we had intended to bring to the whole board today to get direction on that to see how we proceed in the upcoming month. And I'm still learning to get close to the mic. <laughs> yeah, I get accused of being soft spoken on the mic too. So I'll, I'll remind you and you remind me, okay? Thank you. But I get accused to be talking loudly to the mic. <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind Adam of that too. So <laughs> thanks, Adam. Uh, so the recommendation is to approve resolution 2264 and be aware that we're uh, going to have to be looking very closely at our budget throughout the year. Um, but the we believe that we can stay within our budget at the $5 rate right now. Well, at the $5 rate, um, with what we're proposing in the budget and the contractual commitments that we have, we will be about one hundred eighty thousand dollars short but we're of our revenues. Our... But we're going to use our rate stabilization fund balance to make up a make up that one hundred eighty thousand dollars shortfall. Got it. And can you explain to the public uh, how we got our rate stabilization fund and the reason for that fund? So from. Uh, the get-go of the water master, as you know, the water or the admin assessments have been set at five dollars per acre foot. Um, we've kind of grown into the various services and, and programs that the water master is involved in, um, such as the USGS and the Todd groundwater, legal, and the admin. Um, so I, I, you know, over the Last couple of years, we have recouped some caught legal expense through various settlements. So that definitely helped our rate stabilization fund. Also, with the services of AVAC and Palmdale providing admin, been able to reduce the cost to the water master. And that also contributed to adding to the rate stabilization fund. So, but as you can see now, we're, we're starting to dip into that. Uh, stabilization fund both this year and last year and as I mentioned if everything goes as planned we're going to be down to about thirty thousand dollars so that kind of feeds into what Jim had mentioned is that we need to come up with a long-term financial strategy for the water master to make sure we don't run at a deficit each year mm -hmm. uh, obviously we can't do this next year yeah. under the same circumstances yeah right? and <clears throat> As part of that, can this will be more Jim and Hallmark than Matt and Peter at this point. You've done a great job keeping us under $5. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, we can explore other potential sources of revenue for the Watermaster Board um, other than just the rate. Is that something that the Administrative Committee and the board can explore with our administrators? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. No, no, Chair, I, I think that's definitely something that is appropriate. You look at all opportunities to receive additional funding grants that would be applicable to what the Watermaster uh, does, uh, and that would be something that you'd need to include in your budget, budget that, that type of fund-seeking activity. Good. Thank you, Jim. And Adam, you had a comment? No, the only reason I was going to say that we did briefly talk about 
potentially Jim looking into any available grounds. And he said that he does that. So he will keep an eye on that. But I agree we should look for other sources of revenues besides uh, the assessment. Great. Thank you. Any other Rob, Rob, Yeah, Rob, this is Derek. Derek, go ahead. The, yeah. Um, so, you know, as, as Adam said, we did discuss this in the admin committee. And, you know, I think it's a good reminder to the board as well as to the public of, you know, the changes that have occurred over the last seven years since we, the board started. And, you know, we've had seven years of inflation. And I think more that have been, you know, pretty cost up. And I think more importantly, what we've seen is with the ramp down, or, you know, and getting to production rights is the multiplier that we've used times five has reduced. And that's created a revenue, you know, gap from the previous years to now. Um, so the impact is, you know, we're getting pushed from both sides as a board and from the administration standpoint of revenue dropping. Um, as well as, you know, costs increasing. And I think it's, you know, it's important that we understand that. And I fully support uh, having Hallmark, uh, you know, start as soon as possible with the review and outreach um, to the public of, you know, what what a balanced budget looks like and what replenishing the, the reserve looks like as well. Thank you. Some comments. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, I'm very hesitant to uh, approve a budget today, uh, and I will give my reasons why. I think that uh, us dipping into our reserve funds uh, could be problematic. If you look at the uh, legal expenses we have on enforcement and the issues that are out there, I think depleting reserve funds could cause an issue in that format. I also believe that at $180,000 deficit, which ultimately that's what it is. We do have to be aware of the fact that our goal should always be to have a balanced budget every year. Um, I also think that with our 30-day request for the uh, fee schedule and cost breakdown, uh, we should postpone the vote 30 days to allow for more public comment on the budget and give them an opportunity to speak up on their thoughts uh, before we cast a vote on approving this budget with the information that's been brought forth. Other comments? If we were to hold up 30 days on the budget, what, what if any, problems would that cause us? So I don't envision any problems with holding up the budget, but um, I think it's important that we approve uh, the administrative assessment rate today so that we can get invoices out for the fixed portion of the production right. Because uh, based on the rules and regs, there's there's a schedule associated with that. Um, as soon as the budget and assessment rates are set in or approved in December, we typically prepare those fixed invoices out to all the producers. And that's critical to the cash flow of, of the organization. Mm -hmm. so, the downside I, I see with holding it is going to delay getting those invoices out for the fixed uh, assessment and could impact the cash flow. And the invoices go out once a year? Uh, for the fixed portion. That for goes out uh, early Jan late December, early January. Okay. And then the uh, variable invoices go out. And what is that, Patty? Is that like May, April, May time frame? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. If you look back on the um, consent calendar, we had an item of payment of bills, and there's a memo in there that shows the, the cash balance mm -hmm. at the end of October. Our cash was just under $270,000, and we just approved $81,000 in, in bills. So that brings it down to $190,000. Um, and then we'll have invoices over the next couple months that will dip into that. So that, that's what I'm concerned about is the cash flow. So this is Adam, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, 
I understand where Director Tlandri is coming from. And it's not a good practice for us to be approving budget with deficit and all and all that. But, you know, whether if let's say we wait 30 days, I don't think the picture will change. We'll still be in the same boat. I, I think that the one is to going forward to start looking into uh, other sources of income, including adjusting the assessments, as we all know already, that it's time, it's been seven years, uh, inflation ate a lot into the assessment. Uh, so, they, you know, 2023, but hopefully by the end of the year, we would have uh, settled on what assessment uh, is a reasonable amount. Uh, potentially, if there are any other sources of income that we can apply for grants or whatever the case may be, but delaying it, I don't know if you would do anything to delay it thirty days. That's just how I see it. Adam, would you be willing to look at doing something with the assessments sooner than later? I, I yes, yes, I think we should, uh, but I need. We need our administrator, Jim, to uh, tell us at least the minimum steps that we need to take. I mean, we need to reach out to the ratepayers, uh, maybe hold a workshop at the board, uh, one of uh, one of the board meetings before uh, the beginning of the meeting or after the meeting uh, to answer questions, show the public how we've been spending our monies and why we believe that. Uh, an increase in assessment is needed at this time, uh, even if it's one workshop. Uh, and, you know, in, I agree with you, that shouldn't really take months. Uh, but I don't know how the public is going to react to a potential rate increase, but we need to hear them. Do we have the ability to approve the $5 an acre foot fee now? And this is a question I honestly don't know the answer to now but uh, the opportunity within the next couple months to revisit the assessments and alter that fee yeah i think that's maybe a question for craig that i was thinking along the same lines you know yes. you approve the five dollars get the invoices out now and then if the board chose to increase the assessments we could um back charge for the fixed portion as part of our variable billing that achieves the goals of public outreach and funding yeah. the agency in that time frame. I, I would be I would be fine with that. Greg, uh, 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 weigh in? I don't see a problem uh, with with that either, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And and maybe uh, I, I've heard it and maybe we can talk about more have a special budget workshop maybe in March or April where we come up with uh, where we're at, what we're going to need, and maybe alternative sources of funding or places we can look for alternative sources of funding, and then have that meeting for the public, and then make decisions after we explore all alternative sources of funding. Is that nice for everybody? All right, I would request a little later than March. So a special meeting on March for uh, looking at the budget funding, and uh, I'd, I'd be good with that. Derek and uh, Adam? Um, I'm fine with that. The sooner the better. Um, and I know I know no one wants to their assessment to be increased, but realistically, I think that's something we need to look at at this point. I think the board has done an excellent job uh, keeping the budget within the $5 for seven years now. So I, I do believe that the time is come to revisit the assessment and then see how much we need to adjust it by and even for future as far as at least the, the inflation rate. Yeah, this is Derek. I, I do agree. I, I'm, I think we need to get moving on this as quickly as we can. Um, so support of that. Um, you know, I, I'm wanting to make sure before we agree to have a, 
an extra raise, you know, this year to cover the budget that we've really done the outreach and listen, whether that is just doing it, you know, at next year's or doing it sometime during this year, but leave that as an open item um, and not to agree on that. I, I really want to hear what, you know, all the, the, the payers have to say before we do that. And, you know, and this is a process, uh, you know, I mentioned to staff when we had the admin call, it's, it's really good for part of this analysis to get an explanation of the reasons why, we're, you know, the costs are up and we have to you know, potentially do this as well as comparative to, you know, the rest of the state and what, you know, our equal type of um, boards and, and water masters and even districts are doing and, and the rates increase and they're seeing because uh, it, it's all up and down the state. These are, these are taking place. Okay. Thank you, Derek. I think this, I think this, um, nobody likes to rate, raise the rates, but like you said, you have to be realist. Um, we work very hard um, to stay within the budget, but when you see a deficit like that, and we don't have the reserves to cover anything. We have to do something. And I agree that I, I will go for this, but definitely we need to do something as soon as possible. And like you said, no later than March. Very good. Okay. Any further discussion? Is there a motion to approve resolution R2264? So moved. Second. Second. Second by Brandon. Made by Kathy. I, no, hold on a second. Are we approving the assessment without the budget or are we approving everything? We're approving, uh, Adam, Resolution R 2264 is the 2023 administrative budget and the administrative assessment for calendar year 2023. So it's both. Correct. Okay. But okay. we reserve the, right. we reserve the ability to do the part. We're, we're going to, after this, we will. For future agenda items, we'll put on a special meeting to start organizing special budget meeting for lunch. Okay. okay. So, just Rob, before we go to a vote, I just make sure. I mean, this is—is is there any public comments um, that are out there? Of course. Uh, yep. Public comments. Any? I did have a public comment. Um, Brent with Quartz Hill Water District. I don't know if it's a question or a comment. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a head cold today. Um, Matt or Jim, the Watermaster Service contract with the USGS. Just a question there, the 72K. Is the Watermaster on the hook for that entire amount? Or from what I understand, only 25% of that 20, 72K so that we may be able to free up a little bit of money there for outreach. Yeah. So, uh, Brent, this is Matt. Uh, good question. So, on the budget, it does show under expenses seventy-two thousand for the USGS contract. Um, if you look under the revenue portion of the budget, it shows income from the Antelope Valley State Water Contractors Association of thirty-six thousand and eighteen thousand from the Antelope Valley Irwin Group. Got it. Fact, so that offsets it. Yeah, so it offsets it. So therefore, eighteen thousand is uh, the responsibility of the water master. Okay. All right. I was just trying to do my best to find a little money there for outreach. So <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And, and thank you for staying home. Motion to approve resolution R twenty two sixty four. Hearing no further questions, all in favor of the motion R2264 by roll call. Director McLaren? Yes. Director Ricky? Yes. Director Calandri? Yes. Director Urasi? Yes. Director Paris? Yes. Motion is carried unanimously. Mm -hmm. Patty, can you make sure? Oh, Jim, can you make sure for March we have a start scheduling a special meeting? Uh, special budget meeting where we can look at the assessment, brainstorm other fees, and and start early on this process so by next year we know where we're at. Excuse me, Rob? Yes. 
This is Julie Kyle. I've been trying to speak for the last five minutes. Oh, Can I, I make do. a comment? It, it, oh, it's all right. Yes. Uh, I, I have to say, from a landowner's perspective, it is striking to us that the first move is to go to raising the administrative fees without looking at directly at areas where we think that we can cut. And Julie, and, and, I, and save some money. Yeah, Julie, I appreciate that comment. And I think our discussion today about approving this was looking at the whole picture where we can get other potential fees. And I think cutting, you know, that that's the idea of a special budget workshop in March where we all can participate. So I don't think that was lost on us. Uh, as you know, we have really worked really hard to keep the assessment at five dollars, and uh, and I agree with you. We need to look at all potential revenue sources and potential revenue cuts to before we talk about raising the assessment. So you're preaching to the choir. Thank and you, thank Rob. You. Thank you for your comment, Julie. Chairman Parrish, you did ask me a question. So yes, uh, Jessica is busy taking notes and making sure that we uh, are on a path to have that March workshop. And really it's it's pretty straightforward. That workshop will be talking about where, where are we? How do we get here? Where do we want to go? And what's the path? And you know, looking at ways the, the typical things you do in an organization, which I mentioned before, you look at ways to cut costs gener and generate revenue and then develop a strategy for financial management. Great. And Jim, one thing I would like to request on that as well is uh, that be an in-person meeting. Yes. Um, if I'm going to have to ask somebody for more money, I'm going to do it looking at them in the eye. We, we will uh, include that in our planning. And we'll have Zoom for anybody who's sick that day. <laughs> Any other comments? So the motion has passed. We're going to have this special meeting. Uh, and Joy, I'm sorry, we, we did not hear you earlier, so I'm glad you were able to get that comment. Now we're on item 13. You're welcome. Item 13, consideration of possible action on the joint funding agreement between the Allentown Watermaster and the United States Geological Survey, USGS, for the Groundwater Monitoring Program. Uh, who's presenting? Yeah, I'll take this. Thanks, uh, So this is Matt. In your packet on page 98 is a brief staff report that summarizes the, uh, the annual agreement between the Watermaster and the USGS that covers the period of October 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. And just a little history, as you know, um, the water master took over as the contracting entity from the Animal Valley State Water Contractors Association a couple years ago. Um, our budget, we talked about, a little bit about this in the budget, but the, the total cost of the USGS program is 72,000 for this year. And, uh, or it's actually $71,890. 50% of that will be paid for by the association, which they've already approved their budget and committed those funds of just under 36,000. The Antelope Valley Irwin Group has a MOU in place, and this is the third year of the MOU um, that covers their participation at 25%, so just under 18,000. Therefore, the Watermaster's commitment or financial commitment is uh, $17,972.50, uh, which is included in the budget that was just approved. Uh, staff worked hard with the USGS to keep this at or under 72,000. Um, their original proposal to us for this program was uh, near right around 82,000, I believe it was. So they going back and forth, they did agree to hold it at 72,000, which is great and they will continue to monitor the groundwater levels uh, both in the spring and fall on the various wells. And then there's a handful of wells that they do collect water quality samples on. So 
That's all I have in the recommendation today is to approve the joint funding agreement between the USGS and the water, water master. If I, if I could add, this is one of my first meetings that I attended was with uh, the review of the USGS. And as a newcomer, I want to let you know, I'm, we're asking the questions that I think all of you are asking. You start with, is, do you need to keep doing this program? How valuable is it? Is it, is it worth continuing to fund? You can't just keep funding things because you funded them in the past. We spoke with on the call with Todd Groundwater. They're very supportive, explained the value of this program to the newbies in the room. And I uh, want to let the chair and the, and the directors know that that's the kind of review that we'll be doing as we come up to speed on each of the projects that we're, we're dealing with. Uh, Todd and, and your staff did a good job of paring it down to the essential information and we're, we're removing uh, inappropriate or, or not needed uh, monitoring. Great. Thank you, Jim. Any other discussion? I just like what I heard from Jim. Thank you, Jim, for saying that. We do need to be very, very efficient in what we do, so. So, there's no resolution to this. This requires a motion to approve the agreement that's in the packet the between the USGS and the water master. I do have a question. Is there any other possible ways of finding alternative funding for this program, whether it be trying to do application fees or any other way to help subsidize this program other than it coming out of the $5 an acre assessment charge? Um, potentially grants. We could look for grants. Yeah, Chair or Director Flandry, we we can uh, put that into our list of things to review. You know, we're I'm not familiar enough with the funding agreement to see if there's an ability to substitute grant funding from another program, but we'll review that and see if there is opportunities to do that. Okay, if there's another way to find funding for this. I would show sure yeah. And as mentioned in the agreement uh, from the USGS. They are kicking in about thirty thousand dollars for this program. So the program in total is about one hundred two thousand, and USGS is because it's a joint funding agreement. They do uh, contribute some funding to it already. And also, I would also add that any uh, maybe there's any uh, support from the local municipalities as well, because they'll need that information with both. On the lake caps and the sub areas yeah. for future development, and they they are participating oh, they through are. the Irwin. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the city of Palmdale, city of Lancaster, sanitation district, local okay. water agencies. Yeah. Adam, did you have a comment? No, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, Matt said it. Okay. Thank you. So, is there a motion to approve the joint funding agreement with USGS? for the groundwater monitoring program for the periods of October 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2022. Yeah, I move that we approve the joint uh, agreement with the USGS. Motion made by Adam, is there a second? I'll second it. Motion second by Brandon. Sorry to twist your arm. <laughs> Is there any discussion? <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Hearing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion. Director McLaren? Yes. Director Ricky? Yes. Director Colandri? Yes. Director Urasi? Yes. Director Parents? Yes. Motion's carried unanimously. We're on administrator's report. So, real quickly, before I turn it over to Jim and Jessica for, for an update on the transition, I wanted to just take a couple minutes to thank everybody that supported me in this, this role for the Watermaster, uh, primarily Dwayne Chisholm with, with AVAC, Patty Rose, Angelica, or Angel, sorry, Angel, <laughs> um, Peter and Danielle with Palmdale Water District. So, without their support, it would have been possible for me to fill, fill this role. So I just want to say thank you for everybody. It was a great team effort. Yes, uh, this is Dwayne Chisholm. I'm the general manager for AVEC. And, and I would like to thank the board of directors from both AVEC and Palmdale. 
Um, you know, we've gone through a seven year transition here from nothing to where we are today. And it's taken a lot of uh, dedication and uh, guidance from our board. And um, also uh, all of the staff, as uh, Matt mentioned, getting this all, all, uh, all together and getting this to the point to where we are today. If uh, those of you that have been on the board for a long period of time, you've gone through all of the recruitments and the, uh, you know, getting our attorney and engineer and, you know, all the apprehension that everyone had, the uncertainty about the water master board and what it was going to entail and so forth and so on. And, and to look at seven years from where we are today, I think it's a uh, compliment, you know, quite an accomplishment uh, for all the staff and the, and the various uh, public agencies that have put so much time and effort into making this project or this, this board a success. And it's uh, kind of like a wonderful time now to transition into the, the, the full-time administration that you're going to have uh, for, the, for the group. And, uh, and so the, um, you know, the other public agencies can uh, go on to their other duties and do some of the other things that we need to do. So I just wanted to make sure to recognize uh, both uh, AVAC and Palmdale Water District for their huge contribution to the benefit of the groundwater basin here in the Antelope Valley. Dwayne, thank you very much. And I also want to throw in, uh, Dwayne, without your leadership in this for this water master board, it, I don't think it ever will have gotten to this point. And, and that was during the time uh, we were fighting on the stipulation and, and all those meetings that you have run here at AVET with everyone. Uh, you, your leadership got us to this point. And, and I agree, uh, Matt and Peter, Patty, Angel, Holly, and, and everyone who contributed to this could never have happened uh, without all of your hard work. And I think as one board member and for this board, we just really thank you for this. And uh, I have to congratulate your last administrators for keeping the assessment at five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do when you dip into the reserves. <laughs> and we're going to throw the ball to you, Jim, and and uh, we expect great things. So uh, again, Wayne, thank you for doing that, and thanks for uh, the leadership that you provided. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, this is this is Adam. I want to thank Matt. I think Matt, you have been remarkable. Uh, in every aspect, technically, administratively, and uh, financially, and uh, I for one appreciate working with you very much. You and your staff, uh, Patty and Angel, uh, and I want to thank also Peter and the staff from Palmdale Water District. And I really want to thank AVEC and Palmdale Water District for stepping up when we needed them and uh, shouldering all this workload throughout these seven years. So. We appreciate that very much, and we appreciate all what you did. Thank, Thank you, Adam. you, Adam. Very good. And that brings us to the Watermaster Engineers Report. Or actually, uh, Jim does have a yeah. oh, Jim, I'm sorry. We, we yeah. can give you a transition oh, update. Oh, please. Yeah. Update on administration transition to Hallmark Group. Mm -hmm. So while we're saying nice things about Pat and his team, um, again, can you get a little closer to your mic, please? I've said a bunch of nice things already about them, and I could go on for a while saying how helpful they've been in our transition. So I'm going to I'm going to use an analogy. Some of you are just getting to know me. Some of you know me for a while, but I'm a runner. I'm not fast. I'm a distance runner. But the analogy I keep thinking of has to do with a relay race. And so what I feel like today is you started the race with the team that you've got here. And they've done a fabulous job. And I keep thinking in different times we've used this analogy that the baton's being handed off to us. They started out the race, and that's the hardest part of a relay, in my opinion, because I do follow a uh, track a bit. The second thing is you have the handoff occurring, and we've had a good handoff during the last few months from the, your team to our team. And uh, it's tricky. you got to be really careful, but it really helps if you have people that want to work with the next person, right? 
<laughs> it isn't all about them. It's about the success of the team. And I've certainly experienced that with uh, the team that, that you assembled to start this effort. Now I feel like Jessica and I and, and Jacqueline and Josh are getting up to speed these last two months. And now it's time for us to hit the ground running and to carry the baton that they've so uh, adequately and expertly handled. So we're on leg two of a long race for you guys. And, uh, really proud to be part of the team you know going from the stands watching this happen to be part of the team is pretty exciting for us so look forward to good things and to continue the good record that uh, the first the first leg has been with that i want to give you a quick update on what we've been doing so uh jessica is going to do the bulk of this but this slide gives you a quick overview of what we've been doing and frankly we'll go quick through a quick summary of how the homework team is organized I have spent most of my time in that first box, which could look different colors to different ones of you, depending on your screen, but it's on the left. And under the Watermaster box, you can see that uh, I've been involved in meetings dealing with the transition, budget development, including the USGS activity, and then uh, beginning to talk with Matt and the team about uh, assuming the admin duties. In the second box, Jacqueline Harris, the uh, key member of our team that's guiding all the f fiscal items that we're dealing with and that the Watermaster Group has responsibility for. She's been dealing with uh, transaction activities, making sure that we have a good handoff there. She's been reviewing and shadowing the billings and payments that are to occur in December. She's working on the file transition. That's all completed. Oh, the checkbox means we've done that, not that they're in progress. These are actually a list of what we've accomplished. I want to make sure that that's, a, that's clear. And then also working on the assumption of the general ledger uh, in January. And then the final box on the right, Jessica Alwyn, who's with us today, and then Joshua Montoya, who's on the phone as well, are on the Zoom meeting. They've been working on developing uh, meeting materials, working with the, the distribution of that, uh, also doing the back end of the document transfer, uh, working on a dress change, just the practical things you have to do when you're switching organizational locations. Assuming um, meeting materials after December, they're ready to do that. And then also the establishment of office hours. Jessica is going to take over and um, give you a quick summary of what's, what's uh, the schedule and what's coming up. Uh, thank you, Jim. And so just a little bit of a temporal aspect to this. We have our schedule up here. Um, we like to put things at a timeline. It tends to be easy to see. So some of the uh, completed items, like Jim had mentioned, was really developing kind of this transition matrix of who's going to be the points of contact along the way to ease um, the transfer of information. Uh, we've done a lot of the background on the reporting, the judgment review, um, the budget work behind the scenes with Jim, uh, some of the USGS and engineering introductions, as well as the um, uh, work that was passed today. The contracting and insurance has been reviewed and transferred across, as well as the meeting processes. Um, and the electronic documentation transmittal. Uh, what we're wrapping up here in the next month is the final review of the billing and payments and the financial transactions with Jacqueline. Uh, the financial ledger will be assumed come January, as well as the systems and applications um, processes that we're going through uh, with the administrative side. Um, come January, you'll see us as uh, leading these meetings, so we're looking forward to it, and that's uh, more or less what we're expecting over the next month or so. Uh, for the... Um, office hours, uh, we're establishing two different times in person to be held here at the AVEC offices. Um, we'll be here the morning of the second Tuesday of the month. We're ballparking around 10 to noon. Um, then we'll also be here after the board of directors meetings for a couple of hours from about 12 to 2. That's flexible um, depending on when the board session ends, as well as scheduled remote meetings as requested along the way. Uh, the mailing address has been updated um, to the Antelope Valley Watermaster for our Sacramento offices. Those will be adjusted on the website in the coming weeks as well in terms of contact information. And then the application process will remain largely the same. Electronic submittals by email are preferred fastest processing. Hard copies um, can be mailed to the new Antelope Valley address and in-person submittal um, during designated office hours on the previous slide is when we can meet and discuss any questions that applicants may have along the way. 
And so in terms of our next steps, we're going to um, continue these transition efforts and look to um, engage more closely come January. Uh, we'll be finalizing our fiscal transition and look ahead um, for a future board of director focus with uh, kind of a timeline for the upcoming agendas for the board uh, for the year 2023. Are you guys going to be sending out an email with all the new contact information and everything yes. for everybody to have? Yeah. We'll be updating the website and then providing a distribution with some of the, the key points that have changed along the way for January. Fantastic. The other thing that I would ask of you guys, um, find a way to get it uh, word out on the timeline that you guys need on applications being turned in, whether new well applications, transfer applications, new point of extraction applications. Uh, that way there's a, a crystal clear timeline of what's needed for people to do business to get them turned in key. And it also gives us the account of you. It enables us to hold you guys accountable to that timeline as well. Absolutely. We've actually um, discussed agendizing that for the January session so we can make um, get some clarity behind that and set the expectations. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Gary Nunn brings us to our Watermaster Engineering's report. Phyllis, Kate? It is going to be Phyllis this morning. Good morning. Um, thank you very much. I am uh, uh, asking for the screen this morning to show just a few little slides to assist me in my, um, my process here. So give me a second to... Um, Get the screen up and we are underway. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, I thought it would be helpful this morning to have a little show and tell for my uh, discussion because there are a couple of things that are a little bit um, sort of wordy and I always am a little bit better if I have something to actually help. Uh, guide my process. So um, if everyone is willing to uh, sit and listen to four topics this morning, uh, we'll begin with our table of the summary of approved new production and qualified small pumpers. Uh, it's similar to what you have seen in other board packets. We'll move to um, revisions to unused federal water rights for 2022. Um, that's a, just a, a, a new topic for this morning. Uh, I will provide my usual groundwater model development update. And then we have a clarification on a previously approved transfer that I'd like for the, uh, just to make the board aware of. So let's start in with our table that we're all familiar with here. We have tables that show new productions, um, applications that have been approved to date, and qualified small pumpers that have been added to date. Um, the new production tables are on the left, with the top being by year, the bottom by sub-area. Qualified small pumpers on the right, with, again, year and sub-area. There's no change since the October board meeting to the qualified small pumpers. There is an increase of about 18.4 acre-feet a year for new production, because we've added the two that were approved in October. And just as a reminder... We are not including on the new production table the five approved new production applicants that decided not to drill a well. Those uh, applications have actually been rescinded. So um, any questions from the board or anyone on the uh, update to this uh, table? Hearing none, we'll move, move right on to the um, revisions of the 2022 unused federal water rights. So. Um, the, the Edwards uh, Air Force Base personnel informed us um, in, um, in October, actually, that there was that they had conducted an internal audit and identified an error in the production that they had reported for 2021. Uh, we went back and forth with additional information and determined that they had reported 2,120.72 acre feet a year, and that number actually should have been. 13, uh, 1,394.02 acre feet. And so you can see on the table that's on the bottom of your slide here that they have 7,600 uh, acre feet a year of reserved water right. They reported that 2,120.72 should have been 1,394.02. 
What this means for the other parties is that there is now an increased amount of um, water that is unused of that federal right and can be allocated among those eligible to use uh, the unused federal water right water. That um, is summarized also on this table. Their uh, original um, uh, unused amount is shown here. That would have been the 7600 minus the 2120, which is 549, uh, um, <laughs> I can't read my own numbers, uh, 5479.28. Uh, which was allocated among the eligible parties in the 2021 annual report. So this is sort of uh, the, the first time that we've rev had to revise historical data. So I wanted to make sure that the board and public were aware that this is occurring. That unused portion is now 6,205.98 uh, acre feet, a difference of 726.7 acre feet for use in 2022 and because the use was in 2022 we uh, took the opportunity to notify those parties via email as soon as we uh, understood the situation uh, recognizing that the parties would like to know if they had additional water use uh, that they could allocate to in 2022 um, so um, that that allocation for the eligible Exhibit 3 parties is shown now on this table that I've also included here. And again, we see at the top here, this original allocation of the unused portion has been now revised by 726.7 acre feet, uh, increasing that number. And then that increases the amount that is shown here. So we will be revising our water accounting tables and going forward as we move into the next annual reporting, those numbers will be corrected and appropriately footnoted uh, in the annual report to make sure that there's no, uh, you know, sort of historical confusion when people go back and look at the 2021 annual report. So I went through that quite quickly and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody might have on this issue or if you want to say something about the numbers on the tables. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to assume the silence means we're on board. Hey, hang on one second. Yes. How's that going to affect our billing? Are we going to have to refund money? No, we have to bill for that. We have to bill for that water. Right. That's it. Yeah. Well, well, okay. Uh, just yeah. for Director Clandry, I know this is not the case. You were thinking correctly if people overpumped, but since all these people don't overpump, the public water suppliers, mm -hmm. we will build them more money because now they're getting more water for okay. the assessment. If they overpump, then they would have had paid the overpumping charge, right? Yes. And we would have had to refund a little bit because now they're getting a little bit more free water. But since that is not the case, the only thing they will get is a bill for the uh, assessment, the administrative assessment. All right. Good. All right. Great. Thank, thank you, Adam. Um, uh, just moving now to the update of the development of the management model. Um, you might recall that one of the issues we identified uh, as we began to uh, develop the, the model using the USGS base is that the current model applies an annual average value for mountain front recharge and stream flow recharge. And I just have a little picture there showing uh, um, a very small depiction of the model. And I'm talking about these green nodes that are in the model all around the area for mountain front recharge and then for stream flow recharge moving into the basin. And the problem with this is that it doesn't account for seasonal or annual variability in hydrology. So when we attempt to see how the model is performing compared to actual conditions on the ground, we always like to compare how the model simulates water levels to the actual water levels that have been measured. But it's difficult to do that with this model now because it sort of flatlines 
the uh, water levels, as it were, on an annual basis. And because that seasonal and annual variability in hydrology isn't being uh, depicted, um, it, it really it really averages conditions too much to be as useful as the model could. And so what we've been doing is developing a methodology for updating the mountain front and stream flow recharge on a monthly basis so that we can account for that variability in hydrology. Um, we began with the expert reports and began to convert annual stream flow regressions that were developed in those expert reports to monthly values. Uh, we've applied that to the historical and current stream flow data, and that allows us to, again, get that seasonal variability. There's some spatial variability that we're also incorporating into the methodology so that when we only have one source gauge available on a stream, we have an opportunity to um, uh, go past that one gauge and get information sort of downstream of that. So um, the methodology has been developed. I'm proud to say we um, have completed uh, most of the analysis of the work and developed our, our methodology. We are getting that into the model and testing that to see how the model performs with that information in it on a monthly basis. So uh, that's in progress, and that's where we are with respect to the model. We are still on target to have that model available for us in, um, in, in late first quarter of 2023, both to assist us with material injury analysis should it be uh, helpful, and also to begin to uh, develop some general uh, uh, water, water budget numbers to compare back to our methodology. We, we don't have, um, we won't have that water budget information uh, perfectly calibrated at that point, but we're going to start uh, testing the model against some of our information as we get it. So um, uh, that is it for our update on the model, and I'll be glad to take any questions on that. Is the added work we're doing monthly um, makes that much of a difference? Uh, yes, <laughs> it makes a difference with respect to uh, uh, the 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 predictions that we get out of the model and and it is a bit more work but we were uh we were still within our budget we um uh, are developing this uh, additional uh, methodology within the budget that we had uh, have approved with the water master and um i think it's going to make the model much more useful uh not not only from uh you know a um a, a an accuracy standpoint, but also it will allow for a better understanding of how the model's working because we will be able to actually compare hydrographs more uh, more robustly than we can right now, compare two actual hydrographs uh, more than we can right now. Does that make sense? I, you know, I don't know. It just seems to me that the AV is a, an arid region. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're getting, so you're, you're saying you're getting recharged from the mountain front seasonally? Um, yes, based on runoff within the Sierra Nevada. It's mostly the southern uh, boundary. The Tehachapis are a little, a little less, um, they're, not, they're not less variable. You, you mean the because, San Gabriel? Yes. Yeah, yes. Not the Sierra and, Nevada. And, yes, that, oh, I'm sorry, is that what I said? <laughs> the San Gabriels. Um, Yes, that that's right, and and the mountain front recharge, of course, is more stable than the um, stream flow input into the the basin. But we're just looking at both to make sure that we can account for the amount of stream flow runoff com completely in the model. Mm -hmm. Okay, we believe you if you say so. <laughs> we we. Uh, we uh, we feel strongly that this uh, th this monthly variability is is helpful. I mean, we we're in drought now, and we are getting less recharge from the San Gabriels than we have in the past, and it does make a difference with respect, especially to the stream flow uh, recharge. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, the the last uh, 
topic that I have is a clarification, but we wanted to make it to the board. Um, it has to do with a transfer that has already been approved. Um, specifically in May, as of res resolution R2230, the board approved a transfer from the Burroughs 300A40H, which we just refer to as Burroughs, uh, to 40AA water holdings, which I'm referring to here as 40AA. Um, the amount of the transfer was one acre feet of production right, permanent production right, and 220 acre foot of carryover water. It was a, a transfer that was to be used for a solar facility construction and then long-term O&M. The 220 acre foot was for construction water and the one acre foot production right for uh, maintenance going forward. Uh, that application that was approved included four well sites as new points of extraction on four of the many, many parcels that you see listed here that were associated with the transfer. In August 2022, 40AA successfully intervened into the judgment as they had to because they were previously not a party to the judgment and uh, they needed to do that to receive the transfer. So they now have their one acre foot production right in our exhibit for party. In November, they contacted us and they said, hey, there's actually an existing well on another parcel. We, we already had noted that there were four well sites on four of those parcels, but they said, hey, there's, a, there's an existing well on another one of our parcels that was also approved. And we'd like to add that existing well to our new point of extraction. And um, we, we took a look at this and we thought, you know, um, their, the resolution already approved that parcel and it makes no impact at all to the material injury analysis that we had conducted previously. It's just simply uh, five existing wells instead of four. And our uh, thought was is that really we could, um, uh, th th that had really already been approved because that parcel with the new well was already in that approved resolution. So Top Groundwater uh, recommends that there's really no additional action needed by the applicant at this point, that uh, we feel like that parcel was included, and just because we didn't know there was a well on that parcel doesn't really affect anything that has been put into the record to date. So we just wanted to clarify to the board that the applicant had requested this and that our material analysis includes this new request, and so we we just feel like that there's nothing further for the applicant to do. But because the applicant contacted us and because we had had these discussions and checking, we just wanted to make sure that the board was aware of this circumstance. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions? When did the applicant contact the your office? In November. Okay. And they will be using this fifth well? That's correct. Okay. All right. Th thanks for bringing that to the board's attention. We appreciate it. Yes, Have they metered their wells, fellas? Excuse me? Have they metered all their wells now, fellas? Um, I did not check that, Patty, but I certainly will. Thank you for um, making that clear. And procedurally, I mean, all new points of extraction, is that something that has to be approved by the board? Yes. Yes, new point. Yes. We don't. This is over. Yes. Uh, actually, I think their new well is metered because they are uh, planning to test it now. Mm -hmm. it, 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 isn't an, it isn't a new well. I shouldn't put it that way. It's an existing well that, that was newly discovered. Okay. But we do, we do stipulate that they need to meter any wells, anyone that get a transfer we do stipulate, yes, you can use this well. There is no material injury analysis. We did the material injury analysis. It's all good, but you've got to put a meter on the well. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions Essentially, on this? Uh, Adam, that's the assumption of the judgment is that all wells will be metered, say, for the small pumper class unless there's a reasonable uh, grounds to believe that the uh, three acre feet a year limitation is being exceeded. Understood. I, you know, I'm just trying to figure out 
any time we have an opportunity to enforce metering, mm -hmm. since we're not even allocating money to enforcement anymore, we should take advantage of that and stipulate that in order for us when we are proving this with the assumption that you will install a meter on this well if it doesn't have one already. Yeah, 100% agree, and it's it's uh, a requirement that we always condition these applications. Good, good. Thank you. Yes, I understand, uh, Craig. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, if if the board would allow, I wonder if I could just make a couple of final pers personal comments. Um, sure. Uh, after my uh, update, so um, I too would like to also honor the mem memory of Gene Nebaker. Uh, I didn't realize that he had passed until the announcement this morning. And I would like to say that the Watermaster engineer in particular has um, been helped immensely by Gene. And he was um, so incredibly uh, active, proactive in uh, explaining things to me. Uh, I would call Gene on the phone to ask him even the most basic questions as we were getting going. And he volunteered his time and his energy uh, in any way that he could possibly help us. Uh, we had several conversations um, ab about the details of the hydrogeology of the basin. He wasn't a hydrogeologist, but boy, did he certainly uh, know a lot. And he had an amazing uh, record of information and history of the judgment. So um, I, I would like to just say that, that he really brought us up to speed so much more quickly than I think we would have uh, otherwise. And he, um, in, in, in all of the ways that he assisted the Watermaster and all of you parties, I just wanted you all to know um, the depth of that um, interaction that, that he provided to us. And so um, I certainly want to um, honor the memory. I also want to announce that he was the first person to get a meter on his well. He was very proud of that. He called me the day it was installed, and we had, uh, you know, a happy moment together. And I said, I owe you something. What can I get you? And he said, um, you, you, you bake oatmeal raisin cookies. Bring me a cookie. And, you know, I never did it. And so um, uh, maybe someday I'll get the opportunity to provide that oatmeal raisin cookie to him. So anyway, thank you for allowing me to do that. And I want to also just put in my thank you to the AVEC team and the Palmdale Water District team that has been so terrifically helpful to us over the years for the administrative services. Uh, I can't tell you how much Patty and Angel know about the details of everything that is required. I mean, they have been a huge resource to us. Um, they are amazing uh, professionals and it was my honor to work with them and boy, am I sure gonna miss them. Um, I, I have uh, worked a little bit with Jim Beck in the past and think so highly of him and his services. And um, I've also had the opportunity to interact with Jacqueline to date. And uh, I think that the administration of this Watermaster is in excellent hands uh, going forward. But uh, I just want to give a shout out to Patty and Angel and Matt that I just appreciate so much um, all of the work that you did. I think I saw a lot of it firsthand and I saw the nitty gritty <laughs> details that, um, you know, Angel and Patty had to push and go through with all of the parties to make sure that uh, we were all getting the right information and doing the right thing. So kudos to all of them and thanks very much. I'll, I'll uh, turn it back over to the chair now. Thank you. Thank you for those comments, Phyllis. Really appreciate the report and the comments. And that brings us to our general counsel's report. Yes, thank you. And let, let me just echo Phyllis's comments. It sounds like a praise meeting for uh, Matt and Angel and Patty and the staff. Uh, but uh, we went through a lot of uh, a lot of things together over the last uh, since we've been involved as legal counsel and always been a pleasure to work with you. I say jokingly that Patty and Angel have a uh, Juris Doctorate and uh, lawyer standing when it comes to dealing with the judgment. Nobody knows it better on a practical level of how it operates than, than the two of them along with Matt. So thank you for all your assistance over the years. Um, 
in, in terms of report, the, the court matters will be covered under closed session. Um, we have several matters coming up for, uh, for hearing in a, about a week from now in San Jose before Judge Comar. And I'll report on those in, in closed session. Uh, what, what we do have uh, for the board, and, and the board asked some time ago uh, about the situation of what happens when the emergency uh, status uh, ends for uh, the Brown Act um, situation and application of in-person meetings. And we did a memo uh, back in November uh, for that, it's in your packets at page 121 to 123. And beginning in essentially the summary of it, and you're welcome to read it at your leisure and and uh, absorb what the consequences of it are. But and probably not news to those of you that already serve in public agency boards that um, beginning with our, our March meetings, uh, unless there's a renewed state of emergency, uh, the board is going to need to return to in-person meetings, uh, subject to some exceptions that the memo mentions for what's called just cause or emergency circumstances, and there's limitations on how often that can be uh, exercised. But uh, absent that, there's to be in-person meetings going forward. Um, I, I believe that staff slash consultants can uh, can still participate uh, remotely, uh, subject to certain qualifications. But uh, the board members, unless they have an emergency situation as is defined by the law, or just cause as defined by the law, um, have to be present uh, beginning uh, March first for meetings uh, of. That, that are open to the public uh, and involve Brown Act uh, criteria. So that, that memo is there just so that we start thinking now about uh, coming back together in March. Uh, I know some of us look forward to, to doing that uh, and uh, the board should be uh, well prepared to, to have that situation go forward at that time. Um, so, absent any questions uh, about where we are with the compliance with the Brown Act, um, I'd like to go into closed session on the pending litigation matters. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, sub subject to your uh, calendar schedule of how you want to do that, if you want to take a break now. Excuse me. Great. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a five minute break. So, actually, let's take a seven minute break and start at quarter till 12 in the back boardroom. And we will uh, get our closed session done as quickly as possible. So, those of you who want to just wait and have lunch while you're online, we'll be back. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good idea. Move to approve to go to closed session. So, motion made by Kathy, second by Brandon. All in favor by roll call vote. Director McLaren? Yes. Director Ricky? Yes. Director Colandri? Yes. Director Urasi? Yes. Director Paris? Yes. Motions carried unanimously. We will be going in closed session at quarter till 12. Thank you. Thank you.